Welcome back everybody to another Python tutorial. In this Python tutorial, we're gonna go over how to create a basic line chart, or you could call this a graph or a plot. I typically use the terms chart, graph, and plot interchangeably. Now a quick reminder, we are using the Spider integrated development environment. And if you'd like to use Spider, you could just do a Google search and in your search, type out something like Python Anaconda distribution, and it should take you to a site, which is the continuous analytics site and then you want to find your operating system and download the distribution and if you do that and then you open up the spider IDE you should have everything that you need to create these charts okay so the first thing we did here is we imported the matplotlib.pyplot and we typed out as plt and that will allow us to just type out plt and then be able to access all of the different parts of this module or package then we went ahead and we imported the NumPy module or package. And you don't have to use NumPy, but it's common to use NumPy with matplotlib. Okay, and we'll show you some examples of that. So the very first thing we're going to do is show you possibly one of the easiest, simplest ways you can create a line chart. And to do that, we're going to type out plt and then a dot to access the plot. Okay. And then inside the plot round brackets, we're going to put our data. And if you don't put any data regarding the x axis and you just put in a list of numbers, it automatically assumes that you're going to plot the data for the y or vertical axis. Okay, so let's put in a list of numbers here. Okay, so a quick review we use the plt to access the matplotlib.pyplot and then a dot to access the plot. And then inside the plot round brackets, here, if you put no other data besides a list, this assumes that this is going to be the Y data values, and it's going to plot these appropriately. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see over here, we get our plot. So here we have our y-axis, and here we have our x-axis. And as we mentioned, since we didn't explicitly put in x-axis values, it went ahead and created those for us. And then here we have our y vertical axis values. And you can see the line plot starts at 2, and that was our first value. Then we have a 4, and it goes to 4. And it just follows the values that we put inside the plot round brackets for our y-axis values and plots them accordingly. Okay, so that's a very simple example of how you can create a plot. Now, if you want to go ahead and explicitly put in your x values, you can do that as well. And when you put those values in, you want to put those values in as x, y. So let's go ahead and put in our x values here. And make sure that the number of x values that you put in match in count or number or length and match your y values. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 values. So let's put in 9 x values. And let's put these in as increments of 10. So let's put in 10, 20, and 90. So let's run this again. And you can see we get our plot here. The same plot as before, however, our x values that in our previous graph were automatically put in have now been put in according to the values that we specified. Okay, because you can see down here on the bottom, the x-axis values are now 10 through 90. Okay, so that's just a very simple way to create a line plot or a line chart. So let's get rid of that code. And now let's go over a little bit more realistic example. Let's go ahead and clear our console over here. And the first thing we did to create our data is we created our x axis labels. And these labels are going to correspond to months, January through December. Then the next thing we did is we created some y axis values. And we're just going to pretend that these are some type of item or unit sold. Okay, it could be anything. And again, notice that we have 12 months here and we have 12 values for the unit sold. Okay, so what we want to do is we want these X labels across the bottom of our chart and we want these Y unit sold values to be our Y axis. 
So let's go ahead and plot this. So we're gonna use our PLT to access our matplotlib pyplot module. And we're gonna use a dot to access the plot. And then inside the plot round brackets, we're going to begin to put in our arguments. Now in this case, we're not going to explicitly put in any X values, but we're gonna go ahead and put in our Y unit sold values. Now without doing anything else, let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Okay, so over here in the console, you can see we get our plot and these values are for our y-axis and you can see those over here and it went ahead and created our x-axis values for us down here on the horizontal axis on the bottom okay now we can do other things inside this plot such as specifying the color of the line I believe it defaults to blue if you don't specify a specific color and you can also change the width of the line so let's go ahead and show you an example of that so let's put a comma let's type out color and let's say we want this line to be red okay so you just put the color in quotes in this case we just use single quotes and now let's change the line width and let's put in a number of 2.0. Okay, so we just typed out line width, and then we use an equal sign to assign the value for the line width, and we use 2.0. Let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. So you can see over here in the console, now we have a slightly thicker red line. Now you can change the style of the line or the formatting of the line in other ways as well. So let's show you a quick example of how you could do that. Let's delete the line width and the color and let's say that we want a green dash line. In order to do that, we can just use a G inside quotes and two dashes. We run it and you can see now we have a green dash line. What if you wanted a line consisting of blue squares? Then we can put in BS for blue squares. And you can see now we get the blue squares. And what if you wanted green triangles? Now to do that, we can just put in a G and a little caret. And now you can see over here in the console, we get the green triangles. Next, let's say that you wanted to add a title to your chart. To do that, we can just simply type out PLT, access the title, and inside the title round brackets, inside quotes, we want to specify our title. So for this, let's just keep it real simple and we'll say line chart. We'll run it, and you can see over here, at the top, we get the title line chart. Next, what if you wanted to add labels to your X and Y axis? To do that, we can just use the PLT. Let's go ahead and give our X axis a name. For that, we'll type out X label, and inside the X label, round brackets, inside quotes, let's just type out timeline. We can do the same thing for the Y axis. So we'll type out Y label inside the round brackets. We'll give our Y axis a name and we'll just call this unit sold. Let's run it, see what we get. Okay, so you can see down here on the bottom for the X axis, now we have the timeline and for the Y axis, we have the units sold label. Okay, so earlier we created some specific X axis labels. So we want to go ahead and assign those to our chart because currently these labels down here on the bottom, zero through 10 are not very helpful. So to assign those labels, what we want to do is we want to type out PLT and then we want to access the X ticks. And inside the X ticks round brackets, the first thing we want to do is, this is where we're gonna use our NumPy module and we're gonna use the A range function. Now here's some information about the A range. And the NumPy A range is very similar to a normal range, and it takes the arguments of a start and a stop and a step, okay? So it just basically creates a range of numbers. And in this A range, we're gonna go ahead and put the number 12, and this range is going to correspond to the next argument for our X ticks, which is going to be our X labels, okay? And these are the X labels, January through December. Okay, so basically this code here, sets the locations on our chart for our labels, and then this sets the actual specific labels. Let's close our help screen here for a range. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. 
Okay, so you can see down here on the bottom of our chart for our x-axis labels, now we have January through December. Let's go ahead and change this back to a line chart, get rid of that green triangle. Okay, so notice another thing on the way these labels are displayed. Currently, they're just displayed normal, but what if you wanted to rotate those? To do that, you just simply put in another argument here. So let's put in a comma after the X labels. Let's type out rotation, and let's assign a rotation of 90. Let's run it, and now you can see our labels have been rotated according to the number we assigned to the rotation. Okay, so moving on, what if you wanted to put in an annotation? So let's say that at some point in time, something happened and you wanted to put in a little note or a little visual on your graph that pointed that out. Let's go over an example of how to do that. So let's go ahead and type it out and then we'll go over it. Okay, so to create an annotation, we use our PLT, then we use a dot to access the annotate, and then inside the annotate round brackets, we put our arguments. You can see here, the first argument that we put in is the actual title of the annotation text. Okay, then next here, for the XY, we use equals to assign the point where we want to annotate. Okay. So this would be the X and this would be the Y. Then next, the XY text uses XY coordinates again to determine where you want to put your annotation text. Then this code here specifies different information about how you want your annotation to look. So in this case, we're going to use an arrow to point to the part of the chart that we want to annotate. So to do that, we use arrow props, and then we assign a dictionary, and we're going to make our arrow black, and then we're going to use a argument called shrink, and here's some information about the shrink, and that basically just moves the tip and base some percent away from the annotated point on your chart, so it can be a little bit more readable, and we just assigned a value of 0 0.15 for the shrink. Okay, so let's go ahead and try and run this and see how our annotation looks. Okay, so here's our annotation. So we have an arrow and then we have our text pointing to a specific part of our chart. And what we wanted to show is that in August we hired more sales reps and we wanted to see if this had any kind of effect on our sales. And it's a little bit hard to say because even before the extra sales reps were hired, our sales were going up quite a bit. But you could say that right here during this period of time that the sales started to even off a little bit and then we had a large spike and continued growth after the sales reps were hired, okay? So that's just one way you could add annotations to your chart. Now one more note before we finish up, depending on what you're using to create these charts, so for example, depending on what type of IDE, integrated development environment, or text editor you're using, oftentimes to show your chart or to create your chart you may have to type out this code here like this, plt.show. It just so happens that in Spider, I don't believe you have to do that, obviously, because we didn't type it out. But if you're ever having trouble creating a simple chart, just remember that you may have to type out plt.show. That's all we have for this tutorial on how to create a basic line chart. We will be doing many more Python tutorials and specifically many more Python tutorials on how to create visualizations and charts in the near future. Join us for those and we'll see you next time.